In this video, we're going to work out three optimization problems using calculus. In our first example, we're asked to show that the sum of any positive number and its reciprocal is at least two. So we see here the key phrase at least, and that is telling us that we are going to try to show that the uh, minimum value of a taking a number and its reciprocal, adding them together, should be two. So let's recall our strategy. What we want to do is identify the objective function. And we did that. We said that we were trying to find the, uh, show that the minimum value of a number plus its reciprocal is at least two. So we're going to try to minimize the value of a number and its reciprocal added together. We'll write down any constraints or auxiliary equations. We don't have any in this question. If needed, we'll use the constraints to reduce the objective function to a single variable. We'll need to do that in our other two examples. We'll determine a reasonable closed interval for the variable. There's a little bit of uh, reasoning involved there. Um, there's not always going to be the same answer for every person. What is reasonable for one person may not be reasonable for another. And again, we're only going to use that as a sanity check. We'll find the absolute maximum min of the objective function on that closed interval. So we'll be taking the derivative, setting it equal to zero, and we'll check the endpoints just uh, to be sure. And then we'll answer the question using a complete sentence. So our objective function, a number plus its reciprocal. Remember, reciprocal of a number can be written as one over that number. And we don't have any constraint equations, and we don't really need them because we just have a function of one variable. So, you know, Really, we said uh, any positive number. So we'd be going from zero to infinity, but let's look at some reasonable interval. Um, we can get kind of close to zero. Uh, and, and sometimes we can do this by just a, a little mental example. Uh, if I set uh, x to be uh, 1 tenth, then uh, if I take its reciprocal, I'll get 10. So I know that at 1 tenth, the function value is uh, more than 10. And the same thing when x equals 10, it's going to be more than 10. And so um, I know that the, whatever the min is, it's not going to be at the uh, close to zero or close to 10. So these are just some reasonable numbers. Could you have chose, uh, chosen smaller numbers? You know, could I said one over 100 and then maybe a thousand here? Sure, I could choose different numbers there. Remember, this is just to, to really provide a sanity check and to, to show that we understand what the question is asking. All right, so now let's find the critical numbers. I'll take the derivative. Here, what I did is I rewrote this as uh, f of x equals x plus x raised to the power of negative 1, and use the power rule. That's how I got 1 minus 1 over x squared. And I'll set that equal to zero. And I'm going to, to solve that, I'm going to write it as a single fraction. So I'll think of one as being one over one, I'll multiply top and bottom by x squared. Now I have a common denominator of x squared. And so this fraction x squared minus one will have to equal zero. And that means x squared minus one will have to be zero. And x equals plus or minus one. So we're only interested in positive values for x. We want to show that for any positive number. 
So we're really looking at when x equals 1. All right, and we can see that when x equals 1, that value is 2. And it'd be nice to know that this is indeed a minimum. Kind of makes sense from what we talked about before, but we can actually use some calculus. We could use, for example, maybe the first derivative test. If I factor my derivative as f prime of x equals x plus 1, parentheses, x minus 1, in parentheses, all over x squared, then I know that I actually have three critical numbers, but the only critical number I'm interested in is what happens uh, when um, x equals 1. And I misspoke. x equals 0 is not a critical number. Yeah, but the function's not defined there. So if I go ahead and use a test point, I'll find that the derivative is negative between 0 and 1, and it's positive to the right of 1. And so we've got decreasing, then increasing. So our first derivative test would say that 1 is, or f of 1, is a local minimum. Now I can do some um, sanity checks on the endpoint. Uh, I find that uh, my, uh, at my left endpoint, the function is more than 10. At my right endpoint, it's more than 10. And so indeed, this gives me a lot of confidence that we have found the minimum value. So now I, I'm left with answering the question. And the question, uh, said to show, we have shown that any positive number plus its reciprocal must add up to at least 2. All right, here's another example. We're going to make a salt container, and it's going to be made in the shape of a cylinder. It must have a volume of 360 cubic centimeters. We'd like to find the dimensions of the container which uses the least material. Well, the material is going to be proportioned to the surface area of that cylinder. So we might want to review some formulas from geometry. The surface area of a closed cylinder with a top and a bottom is 2 pi r squared. Each circle is pi r squared, so I have two of them to top in the bottom, plus 2 pi r h, that is the lateral side. Now in this question, uh, I have a constraint. I am told the volume must be 360. So the volume for a cylinder is the area of the base times the height, so pi r squared h. And so my constraint equation is pi r squared h has to equal 360. Now that's useful and necessary in this question because my surface area is a function of two variables. So I'm going to have to eliminate one of the variables using the constraint equation. And so it would be uh, awkward to solve for r. We could do that. We could solve this equation for r. But then I would get a radical expression. And we can still solve the problem. It's not really an issue. But I think that it will be easier if we solve the constraint equation for h. So then I'll go ahead and take this 360 over pi r squared and put it in the place of h in my objective function, my surface area. And when I simplify that, I get that s is 2 pi r squared plus 720 over r. And so I'd think of that as 720 times r to the minus 1 power. 
Now I need to choose some reasonable valuable, reasonable bounds for my radius. So if I think about this relationship between the height and the radius, um, if the radius is one centimeter, uh, then my height is going to be um, really big. I mean, it's going to be 360 over pi, it'd be 120 centimeters. So that would be a funny looking uh, salt container if it's more than a meter tall, but only uh, two centimeters wide. Uh, so that would be a reasonable lower bound on R, maybe even bigger, maybe I could even say two or something else for the lower bound. And then for the upper bound, uh, if I choose R to be 20, 20 squared is 400. And so this would be a height being less than one centimeter. Uh, so having, uh, then we wouldn't even have a, a, a container. We'd have like a disc, this very wide disc. It's going to be 40 centimeters wide and less than one centimeter tall. So, uh, we know that whatever the optimal value is, it's got to be between 1 and 20. So this is what I mean by some reasonable bounds on my variable. So now I have to take the derivative of my objective function. So s prime is 4 pi r minus 720 over r squared. And I'll set that equal to 0. And so I will write that as a single fraction again. Multiply top and bottom by r squared. So I get a common denominator of r squared. And then I can set that equal to 0, which means the top has to equal 0. So r cubed would be 720 over 4 pi. And r is the cube root of 180 over pi. So it gets pretty awkward uh, with these problems always to write the exact answer. So I'm going to uh, um, tell you that uh, for these types of problems, it's fine to take out your calculator and get a decimal approximation, but make sure you use at least two decimal places. All right, and let's check. Do we actually have, what are we trying to do here? We're trying to find the, the least material, which tells us that we should be looking at a min. And I hope that this value that I found is a min value of my objective function. Well, let's check using the second derivative test here. If I take the second derivative, I get 4 pi plus 1440 over r cubed. And if I evaluate the second derivative, when r cubed is uh, 180 over pi, I just simplified 720 over 4 pi, I find that it's positive. I don't really need to know what the exact value is, I just need to know that it's a positive number, and that will tell me then that um, the graph of the function would be concave up, and then that would be a local min correspond to a local min. And just as a quick sanity check, if r equals 1, my surface area is 726. If r equals 20, my surface area is more than 2,500. And when r is my optimal value, my surface area is 280, which is smaller than either of the other values. So now I have even more confidence that what I have is a min value. All right, and so if I wanted to find the exact value of h, it would be very awkward, but I can go back to my equation here. I could write the exact value in this complicated expression, which I can use my calculator to get a decimal approximation. So this is going to be about 7.71. So I encourage you to write, whenever possible, even a complicated expression for the exact value because it's very easy to uh, hit the wrong button 
on your calculator or hit the buttons in the wrong order and get an incorrect value. So uh, here I've uh, got a decimal approximation. And so the last thing to do is just to write a sentence here uh, answering the question. And the question asks us to find the dimension. So I need to tell the R value and the H value in my answer. The container which uses the least material has a radius of 3.85 centimeters and a height of 7.71 centimeters. Now for our final example, we're going to find the point on the curve y equals x squared, which is nearest the point 3 comma 0. Now we have to do a little bit of interpretation to determine what the objective function is here. Nearest the point 3 comma 0 means having the smallest distance to the point 3 comma 0. And we have a distance formula. So the distance between two points is the square root of the difference between the x coordinates squared plus the difference between the y coordinates squared. Remember that just comes from the Pythagorean theorem. So let's just draw a quick picture here to kind of get an idea of what's going on. We have y equals x squared is the red curve. Our point is this blue point, 3 comma 0. We want to find the point on the parabola which is closest to 3 comma 0. Now um, we could say that uh, it wouldn't make any sense to choose a value uh, on the with a negative x coordinate, so on the negative branch here. Uh, so we can say that probably the smallest value I would choose or guess is in our range would be x equals zero. And then honestly, uh, we can clearly see that uh, when x equals three, uh, our distance to the, um, if I chose y coordinate the nine there that um, that would definitely not be the closest point so the a point up here is not the closest point when x equals three and uh, the point here on the y-axis might be a reasonable choice but choosing any value to the left of that uh, would be um, a bad idea so two things. First of all, rather than calculating the distance um, as our objective function, we can use the square of the distance. And so I better make that function squared. There we are. So I just looked at lowercase d squared, I'm calling that uppercase d, and that's going to be our objective function. Our second point is going to be some point on the curve. We don't know what the x coordinates are, that's what we're trying to find. The x and the y coordinates of the point on the curve, which is closest to 3 comma 0. So I'm just going to use generic x and generic y for my second point. Now my first point is given. That is the given point 3 comma 0. And so our objective function then would be capital D equals parentheses x minus 3 squared plus parentheses y minus 0 squared. Now you can see that this is a function of two variables, so I'm going to need a constraint equation. 
And the constraint is that it has to be on the curve. You can't choose any x and y. It has to be an x and y on the parabola y equals x squared. So I could go ahead and replace the uh, y with x squared. And that gets me the objective function. After I multiply it out, that d is going to be x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus x to the power of 4. And I'm going to say that, look, reasonable limits on x would be, from our discussion previously, x could be uh, as small as 0, but it would make no sense to choose a value which would be negative for x. And I even put 5. Really, from our discussion, we would say 3 would have been a, an, an, a reasonable upper bound on x. But I said, let's go ahead and use 5. So find the critical numbers. Uh, take the derivative. And I'm going to set that equal to 0. Now, we can solve this equation using our techniques from algebra because it has a rational solution. Remember the uh, numbers that we would try, uh, it would be to say take factors of the constant term divided by factors of the leading coefficient. Um, so I'm going to say, uh, you know, if you have this type of question on the homework, can use technology. If this type of equation came up uh, on the test, we're going to have another video where we can show how we could get uh, a solution to this equation. Um, but for the moment, whether you use algebra or whether you use technology, you can find that the solution uh, is x equals 1 can just verify that. If I take 4 plus 2 minus 6, I get 0. And again, let's verify. I mean, it says smallest distance, so this would give me a minimum. So x equals 1 should correspond to a minimum. Take the second derivative, and I can see that when uh, the second derivative is 12x squared plus 2, uh, in fact, that second derivative is, is always uh, positive. And so uh, the only critical, um, the only local uh, extremum I can have is a local min. And just as a sanity check, when uh, x equals 0, the distance is squared. The square of the distance is 9. And when x uh, equals 5. The square of the distance is 629. But when x equals 1, remember capital D is the square of the distance, is going to be 5. All right. So we're not asked to find the smallest distance. We're only asked to find the point on the curve, which is nearest 3 comma 0. So I found the x coordinate is 1. So I need the y coordinate. And I can use the constraint equation to help me there. It has to be on the curve y equals x squared. And so the point on y equals x squared, which is nearest 3 comma 0, is the point 1 comma 1. I'll post another video with some, some more questions, but I hope you found this video useful.